Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and in-betweeners and Republicans. Wah, wah. I am your hostess with the mostest, Alexander Rodriguez, here for On the Rocks, where celebrities and cocktails mix. Tonight, we offer a potpourri of talent from around the world. Uh, we welcome singer-songwriter uh, Mark Arthur Miller, three names, uh, son of Motown hitmaker Ron Miller. We have international superstar model and actress, and Miss Panama. Funny, I was with Mr. Panama last night. Wah, wah. Patricia de Leon, and CEO of Reverie, the global streaming network for all LGBTQ LMNOP content. We have De Damien Bellagione. Is that how you say it? Yeah. And from A&E's Hoarders, a show I am obsessed with, one of my favorite obsessions, we have Dr. Robin Zazio, the sexiest doctor with the least sexiest people around. Also, we have my eye candy guest co-host, telenovela star and arch nemesis Enrique Sapene. And comedian and adult entertainer Wesley Woods, let the drinking begin. <laughs> and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, coming at you from Sunset Gower Studios in the heart of Hollywood, where I drink with your favorite celebrities, and we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, and that's about it. So pop a court, pour a glass, lean back, and enjoy On the Rocks every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. You know, oh, wow, applause. Wow, 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 wow. Go for that. I just love this show because you never know who's going to show up. It's like, guess who's coming to dinner, right? We have everybody. We've had Academy Award winners next to drag queens and everything in between. I love it. We are your favorite pre-existing condition, and I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> I just have to say, I, I, I buy the same bronzer for everything. It's this cheap bronzer that you just keep around, right? Well, this time I bought it, but I didn't notice. I had got it with glitter. So if I'm, like, shining like a little elf, like, I put it, I put weight, and it's like... I look like C-3PO in Mexico. I thought he was coming from a carnival. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wouldn't be able to walk if that was the case. It's a long Cinco <laughs> yes. de Mayo. <laughs> well, I've seen some long Cinco de Mayos in my day. Uh, today's show is presented by our mega sponsor, Infusion Beach Club. It is the luxury Las Vegas-style resort coming to Palm Springs in just a few months. I will be broadcasting there uh, regularly by the pool for many different types of parties. So uh, go like them on Facebook, IBC Palm Springs. Hello to our listeners around the nation, everywhere on iHeartRadio. Universal Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes. And of course, we are on Facebook Live to our audience on Hillcrest Social in San Diego, True FM in Ohio, and nationally on Reverie Networks. Woohoo! My mom, Mama Rose, is in the chat room. She is answering all your questions on ubnradio.com. Um, so ask her questions. She's done research. Wesley, she's in love with you. Yeah. She did her research. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Um, so she'll be answering your questions. If it's a burning question, she's going to Skype into the show and ask Kurt, Kurt, you're late. Oh, Kurt. <laughs> well, oh my God, poor thing. Oh my poor God. thing, it's my show. That was, that was a sincere apology. Yeah, he wore his pajamas to work. I'm in a tie. <laughs> Kurt, do you have a pun for us? Every week, Kurt gives us his pun. I always have a pun for you. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to, and I'm sorry to our Latinos, it's bad in any language. <laughs> yeah. Now that you prefaced it. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between a well-dressed man? What's the difference between a well-dressed man? On a bicycle. On a bicycle. And a poor-dressed man. And a poor-dressed man. On a unicycle. Something with a wheel. It's wheelie really bad. <laughs> I like that one. It's a tire. Higher? Uh, a tire. A tire. A tire. Oh, 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 my God, that oh was God. bad. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will not be using that yes. in my show. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> That's a good show opener, Mark. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> uh, apologize. Trump, don't fire me for that one. Uh, <laughs> my guest co host for today, as we mentioned, our telenovela star from Wii TV's My yeah. Life is a Telenove Telenovena, Enrique Sapena. And you've been in American Projects, Latin Projects. Yes. You guys, True. go to YouTube, put in Enrique Sapena, and put in that telenovela. Your clips when you were like in Menudo were, are, are there. Menudo. I swear you ah! were in there. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. They all look the same, you know? Oh, what? Oh, my God. You, at that one point, you had that like longish hair. Yeah. You look like a Treyu from Never Ending Story. Like, uh, honey, yeah. He just, gave you, he just yes, gave you 25 yes. years more. Oh <laughs> Kill him. Coming, uh, yeah, but I, I, I've seen you in, in everything. Um, new to the show, 
Uh, we have stand-up comedian and adult entertainer Wesley Woods. Wesley has started his uh, started his comedy career in Las Vegas, performing at many venues, including sets at the Sayers Club, SLS Hotel, Fancy. Uh, most recently, Wesley competed and reached the finals of LA's Funniest Comic Contest, just came here in October, awesome. and currently works for some of the top studios in the industry. Wesley, welcome. Thank you. Woo! I feel the love. Welcome, welcome to us. Are you ready for all of this, Wesley? I am. I'm excited. Is yes. Woods your actual... Last name? No. And you know, I missed a really great opportunity. People are always like, you look like Ryan Gosling. I was like, damn, I should have been Ryan Guzzling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There goes my I Heart Radio syndication. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I should just be quiet the whole time. No. <laughs> No, it's, it's such a pleasure. Like I said, we have everybody on the show. Um, it's such a, and you're so funny. I saw a video of your comedy roast that you did, and it was like boom, boom, boom. I mean, you know, it, uh, to yeah. be witty and do your yeah. one-liners and comebacks, that's a hard yeah. thing, and you the, just totally brought yeah, it. Yeah, the roast battle at the uh, Comedy Store every Tuesday night. They're and you won. Nice. Yeah, I won. Hands down. The audience loved you. Um, is, is doing stand-up hard? Because I know that you talk about you, you talk about your job and, and all that. Do you get some guff from, from some of the crowds? Oh, for sure. But I think uh, performing out in Las Vegas um, allowed me to really branch out and broaden my comedy routine because you have people coming from all over. Um, so you never really know who's in the crowd. So you have yeah. to really be on your feet and aware of who's actually sitting in the chairs. Um, and you don't shy away from your career in the industry. I mean, you've been nominated for awards, and that's a whole award yeah. s system to itself. Like, it's cutthroat. We thought the Academy Awards were bad. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, the Adult <laughs> Industry Awards? It's like, I'll cut a bitch. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Grabbies are coming up in uh, Chicago at the end of the month, and I, I was surprised, but um, I'm nominated for 11 awards, including uh, Performer of the Year and... Ton, I mean, I, yeah, wow. I was shocked. What does that wow. do for your career? So like Hollywood, like you're the hottest thing, and then you get paid more, you're able to demand more on set? I, I, no, sadly. <laughs> it's, not like, it's, not like you, it's not like you can keep wardrobe from set. It's like, can I keep wardrobe, please? Right. Except, I have a picture from a parody you did. You did a Star Wars parody. Oh, I did. No. That was filmed and out you got in Barcelona. To play in Barcelona? Yeah. And you got to play Kylo Ren. Yes. Did you get to keep the, the mask? I didn't, but that, and that mask sucked. It was so hot inside of that Well, mask. I can imagine. And then they dyed my hair black, so as I take it off, I'm like drenched oh, God. in yeah, oh, black no. bad But these parody <laughs> videos, you guys, like they look like the actual film sets. It's, yeah, they actually put a lot awesome. of time into it, yeah. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest stigmas in dealing with performers in the en entertainment industry? Um, that we're all... Um, on the rocks. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Oh, oh you mean yeah, drugs. drugs. Yeah. Oh, well... You know, every every stereotype has started from from actual fact. And I'm not going to say that's not it. true, but... Yeah. I've dealt with a few. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name names. Um, but no, but that is a big part of the industry. It is. And I know the industry as a whole is trying to combat that, along with AIDS awareness and, and all that, but they're also trying to bring awareness well, to the Well, I think drug. like uh, the smartphone and social media has brought a different type of performer into the scene um, where people, you know, it's a lot easier to just put yourself out there. And so... Um, it's bringing, I guess, some homegrown type folks like myself who have a little bit of more morals and values, as odd as that is to say in adult entertainment. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I even talk openly about it with like my parents. Like, I mean, the first person I called was my mom. I was like, oh my God, I was when, nominated, when you got for, cast? When I was nominated oh, for 11 awards. It was like Black like, Swan, you're like, mommy, I got cast. Yes. <laughs> 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 totally. I've seen that black spot. Anyway, <laughs> no, but and in fact, I saw a really cute picture. Your Instagram is really great, by oh, the way. Thank you. T tell our listeners what your Instagram is. Uh, the Wesley Woods. Um, because you have pictures with your family. You'll be hanging out, and you are a family guy. Yeah, I really am. Um, here's a picture of you and your mom, and it's so appropriate for Mother's <laughs> Day. And you guys are working on a book. We are. That's actually at the kitchen table out at the ranch in East Texas. Yeah, um, we're working on a book. Uh, working title right now, but it's um, basically about a penis superhero who okay. goes around. Um, you know, one day he is non-existent and then the next day the wind blows and he flexes real strong and um, it talks about the changes that a man will go through um, during it's puberty. It's the Caitlyn Jenner yeah. story. I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> one day it's there, one day it's not. <laughs> no, but but it's it's because you had a funny, your mom had like a sex telling you how things yeah, were. Yeah, she, um, you know, I, I'm one of three and she um, took on the role. She was She's actually my biggest inspiration in comedy and so she, uh, 
came up with this crazy cuckoo, like um, Dr. Seuss adult themed story. And that's how she explained the birds and the bees to us. And so we're actually finally putting it to a book. I love it. I wish my mom, we still haven't had the birds and bees story. <laughs> mom! <laughs> so, honestly. Um, do you have any funny like stage stories uh, from, from, from your stand-up comedy? I mean, I can't even imagine, being a stand-up comic must be so difficult because you have a different type of audience. It's not like when you do a theater show, you know what audience pretty much is coming to see you. You don't know if they're going to be drunk, if they're going to be in a bad mood, if they only want this type of jokes, or what, do you have any like funny... Well, I mean, I just go out and I just do me. Um, I, there's no one who has my perspective and my story, and I think you have to just kind of remember that when you're on stage and just go out there and perform um, and not shy away from it, regardless of who's out there. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's been a few times where I'm standing on stage and, you know, the uh, voice inside my head is like yelling at me, like, tell him a joke already. And, you know, yeah. I think that I am and there's not getting a response. And so then you would just walk off stage with your tail between your legs. So I think everyone's had that 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 happened. I've had it on the show where, you know, I have like a stand-up comic come in and I think I'm being really funny and they just stare at me. <laughs> and then I start to sweat and then I try harder and my jokes are like even worse and it's just, and then yeah. I just like, I want to go home, but yeah. I'm, I'm stuck here. Um, well, welcome to the show. Thank you. You're going to help me interview our great cast totally. uh, today, along with Enrique. Yes. You know, and you come from, you've done your own hosting and interviewing as yeah, well. Yeah, for uh, for Univision. Yeah, for Univision, for Telemundo. I mean, uh, Entertainment journalism, all over. So how do you prepare for an, an, an interview? Well, the thing about it is, like, what's so great about it is that you don't know what's going to happen, because it's particularly when you're live, and they're just like, you know, you can go talk to somebody, and all of a sudden, like, you know, they're looking at you like, what the hell are you talking about? And to keep the ball rolling. You know, because sometimes, in particular in Spanish, because if you You guys talk so damn fast. Yeah. <laughs> at least, like, I could talk slower, and it's like, oh, it's okay, it's fine. You guys are like, blah, 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 blah. And the drama. Yes, well, you know? I know you personally. There's a lot of drama there, <laughs> especially when the bill comes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's like, what okay. bill? Exactly. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so it's like, you know, you just prepare for it and hope for the best. It's great when you have a character, but when they're quiet, they don't respond. Well, here's so, the thing, and you always come across so innocent, but then you come out with these stories. It's yeah, like, so the we heard that you were in that's jail and like all these things come out. That's the trick. I have a little clip of you from a telenovela, and I just want Which everybody one? to listen to how goddamn fast you're talking. <laughs> Let, let's play <laughs> a little bit. Pero como se les ocurre? What? Si le es una niña. What? Si es una hermana de Lourdes. Calm down. Yo soy un demente. <laughs> Ay, por favor, permíteme dudarlo. ¿Sabes qué? Me tienes harto. Me sigues, me persigues, me acosas. Por eso me escapo de ti. I don't even know what's being said, but it's not good. Okay, get ready for this. Ya dije que no. Look at the guy. And the piano. Thank God a piano player was on the patio. <laughs> and then the, there's that pause. I didn't know Fabio did telenovelas. Okay, wait on this one. Oh. Oh. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> okay, so tell us, so tell us the story, Bill. Well, that one is called Escándalos. 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 That's my grinder profile name. We were telling. <laughs> <laughs> we were telling the story of Kate, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, you were? Yeah. The, oh, that's weird. The I didn't guy even. The with the blonde hair is playing Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, before wow. being Caitlyn. He's not quite done yet. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm playing Scott. That's not a cover of any magazine. <laughs> I'm playing Scott, the the husband of the Scott cadet. Disick. Yeah, you are Hispanic. such a Scott Disick in real life too. <laughs> Devoted husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Straight with baby mamas. Yeah. Too mm. bad. Straight <laughs> bad. And that's what we were doing. That's the story that you saw. Oh, that's so funny. I, so, <laughs> I didn't even know that. I, that day I came back, drunk home, blah, blah, blah. She's dumping my ass, telling me I'm a deadbeat dad. That's what's happening in Spanish. Best dressed deadbeat dad I've, yeah. I've ever seen. <laughs> right? So, but what's it like? You know, divas in the soap opera world, like Susan Lucci, that's a certain type of diva. And I know you know Patricia well, we from, from, from back. What's it like dealing with an actual <laughs> diva on a telenovela set? <laughs> well, I mean, some of them are great. But some of them are real bitches. Yeah. Like big time. I will be some under the, the great one. Yeah, the nice one. <laughs> the but, one. But is it true? Are they really that big of a diva yeah. on, on set? No joke. No joke. Absolutely. So that's where you learned everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. He, 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 he it. That. No, but yeah, like some of them are not easy. And you just have, remember, you shoot an episode and a half a day. So you got to keep oh, it wow. moving. You got to keep it moving. 
and these women sometimes is like, no, the light, or, you know, whatever, and like the way I look in this. Yeah, but because they want it to hair. look good. Yeah. Who doesn't want to look good? That's the main no, that's No, you have to look extra good. Yeah. Your <laughs> butt has to be, like, up your back. Um, Literally, your boobs have to be up your, like, neck. Mine so it's usually kind of are. Like a, it's kind of like a porn. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Lighting is everything. <laughs> you don't want certain things to look too small, but you don't want things to look too big. <laughs> totally there. Yeah. Yes. Always kinda the like, tanning. Always the tanning. Ta- always the oil. It's kind of like Alex like getting ready for the show. Exactly. Yeah. With my glitter bronzer. With the glitter bronzer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you guys are here to help me interview. Um, and so I see Dr. Robin Zazio has been calling. So for those listeners who are not obsessed with hoarders, let's play the hoarder uh, trailer real fast. I, I, I watch the show hour after hour so after good. hour. So good. So good. I do crime scene investigation for a living. This is the worst house I've ever been. You're standing where she sleeps. Oh my God, it's devastating. The clock is ticking to when my son would be taken away. Right now I have about 15 dogs and nine cats. I can't open it. I'm horrified. I'm gonna have to call somebody to pull you out of there. I don't think I'm a hoarder. Hoarders, all new, Sundays at nine on A&E. That's just, that's, I mean, that's just crazy. But this is the show that, that takes yeah. my, my time. Dr. Robin? Hello. Yes, hello. Hey, hey, you're live on On The Air. Sorry, we're a few minutes behind. Well, no worries. I've been calling your cell. I was a little worried, but uh, great to hear from you. Yeah, so I'm obsessed with you. You know, you're my favorite castmate, uh, my favorite doctor from Hoarders. You know, you come in with that sassy ponytail, and you're just there to do business. <laughs> <laughs> well, rolling up my sleeve, pulling my hair back, and ready to get rolling. And and you do. I'd like to formally introduce you. Um, uh, of course, uh, Doctor on Hoarders, host of Animal Planets, My Extreme Animal Phobia, author of The Hoarder in You, How to Live a Happier, Healthier, Uncolored Life. Uh, check it out. A licensed clinical psychologist and licensed clinical social worker. She has been specializing in treating anxiety and related disorders uh, for the past 16 years, utilizing cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure and response prevention wow. techniques and has established the Anxiety Treatment Center in Sacramento, which you own and currently uh, run. Welcome to the show, Dr. Robin Zazio. Oh my gosh, it's a pleasure and I've been really looking forward to this. Oh, sorry. We're, we're playing all this applause <laughs> that, that you can't hear. Um, so, doctor, just to get down to it, you're currently in Sacramento running this amazing treatment center. If I lived in Sacramento, I would need anxiety um, help. <laughs> How did you end up in Sacramento? Oh, that was oh, a joke, that the is uh, <laughs> far too long of a story to uh, be able to explain to you. But since I've gotten here and been running this practice, it has been the most ama- amazing experience because we are actually the only program in all of Northern California that is helping people that are uh, not only struggling with anxiety disorders and hoarding disorder, but a specialty practice. So we don't throw the kitchen sink at people as we really specialize in helping people on the front line um, treatment modalities, which really is about exposing themselves to this, their fears, really being able to identify what is causing your fear and going after it. How do you get into something like this? As a a kid, you know, people say, I want to be an actress, I I want to be a firefighter, and you're like, no, this is what I want to do. How how, how does that attract you? What sparked your uh, interest? Well, strangely enough, when I left high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to further my education, so I went to college, and it seemed like the right thing to do for a girl at that time was psychology. So I went for it, but I didn't really know what my specialty was going to be. And then I actually stumbled across forensic psychology, which is about you know, a person who has mental health issues that commits crimes. And it was really fascinating. But a, 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 a turn off of the freeway one day changed my entire course when I went into a facility that was starting an anxiety program. And they said, oh my gosh, we'd love to have you here. And within two weeks, my entire focus shifted. And what is so cool about this work is it's very behavioral. It changes people's lives because they're doing things differently. It's not just a mind shift, but it's thinking differently and then doing things differently, which is so much of what you see with hoarders. 
Well, and each episode is clearly so different from the minute you walk in and the type of hoarding. Some people hoard objects. Some people hoard food. Some people hoard things we don't even want to talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's been a few of those. Yeah. Do you remember your very first um, hoarding client that you went to visit? Do you remember the first one where you opened the door and you were like, oh, my God, this is, this is it face to face? I do. I do. And she was actually a security officer. And she had a few dogs that she loved and adored and took really good care of. And I remember I walked in and she didn't have electricity and things were sort of powered in whatever way she could, you know, battery operated. And it was, it was so difficult because of the dilapidated conditions that she was in. And we couldn't really do a lot for her home, but in this case, she had her parents' home that was next door, and both of them passed away. And so she took all of their stuff and moved it into their place, into her place. And she lived in about 1,100 square foot of area, and it was just filled to the top. And, you know, by working with her, she was able to start letting go and see that there was a better place to live and that her parents would be really be okay with her letting go of her stuff. That was the first and probably the easiest job I've ever done. It only seemed to get more difficult after that. You're so amazing. The way you talk, number one, I want you to read like the biography, like the book on tape of my, of my biography, because <laughs> your voice is so amazing. How, but, but, well, thank you. Yes. How do you not get rattled in situations like this? I mean, it's, it's just crazy to me. You're always so calm and collected, and sometimes, you know, there's violence on the set. Um, how do you keep this all together? How do you mentally prepare yourself to start a new client? Well, I think the first thing uh, that I would say is to, you know, kind of think about a surgeon. You know, he's got to do a brain surgery. He's got to, you know, remove a tumor. And I'm certainly far from trying to compare myself to that type of specialty and extremity, but they have to stay cool. And what I know about working with people who are struggling with hoarding disorder is that they've already been met with people who have agitated them, been angry, been irritable, and we have to approach them in a way that is different and unique, which is staying calm and listening, because so oftentimes at the point at which they come in front of our doorstep, they have had it, they don't have any trust, everybody has come out there to their place telling them what to do. In many cases, uh, people have gone into their home, removed the stuff without their permission. And so what I want them to know is I get that this is a mental health condition. This is driven by anxiety. Nobody, you know, when they're in high school says, I want to grow up and live in a lot of stuff and be isolated and have people threatening me all day. That's not what's happening. They have a hoarding disorder that causes these symptoms. And you know, we're going to get so much further by uh, helping them to understand that we understand that this is driven by anxiety and fear. And then if we can work at that level, we're going to have so much better results than otherwise. This, I mean, this is great work. And I didn't realize how big of an issue it was. You guys don't have any lack of new people for the show season after season. Why do you think this has become like a, such a hit? Everybody is watching the show. Everybody's binge watching the show. Why do you think we're all crazy for the show? I think there's a couple things. The first thing is, is that people who struggle with hoarding disorder are very shameful and embarrassed. They don't need to be, but they are. And so they isolate and they oftentimes can have neatly organized yards where you would never know that they're struggling with this condition. And so they live in isolation and kind of this protective covering of their home. And over time, as mental health issues have increased, more and more people have struggled with this condition. And so as hoarders as being in terms of the show has been the first of its kind to showcase this condition, it's opened the door to 
helping people to understand, look, there's treatment. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to be ashamed. This is a mental health, you know, condition, as I mentioned, and, you know, we'll come and help you. And my practice has grown significantly as a result of the show in the sense of helping people to see that there's help out there and there's people who will understand and help you in a very kind and compassionate manner. Is it hard to date Dr. Robin? <laughs> I'm not sure what like your, your personal life is like, but I would be so intimidated to date somebody that was in hoarding. So I'd be like, do I keep this movie theater ticket? Do I, do I, do I keep this memento or this Hallmark card? <laughs> like, how does somebody go on a date with Dr. Robin Sasio? <laughs> Um, well, first of all, no one's dating me because I'm married, and I have oh. been married for a very long time. Congratulations. So. I'm sure yeah, your garage is the cleanest know, garage I, anyone's I, ever seen. So <laughs> I, I keep my personal life very, very private, right. and so a lot of people don't know that. So depending on your listening audience, it might go virtual. Uh, but yeah, I've been married for 20 years now. And um, my husband is a very neat and organized person, and I am as well, although he would disagree when he walks into my closet because I have probably about 250 pairs of shoes. Yes! (laughs) Yes! That is hoarding. Our listenership just got really excited. It's hoarding. That's not hoarding. That's a Melba Marcos. You can't go wrong with that. That's fashion. That's fashion, girl. No, that's normal. Oh, my God, Dr. Robin, let's start a new show called Fashion Hoarders. Yes! (laughs) You're onto something. Well, you know, I don't know. I guess I don't know what my fashion would be determined to be. But, you know, I do love shoes. But what I will say is that I'm very good about making sure that I can find my shoes. You know, if if anybody has read my book, there's a story about, you know, not wanting to, you know, be under the bed with my feet flapping in the air as I'm trying to find the match to another one. And so I'm late and, you know, trying to scramble and feeling frustrated and tripping over my clothes. Like I do have them, you know, kind of nicely situated and they do get a little out of control and I have to take some time to put them back. But I do have a system that I really work with people on. And that is if you don't have a home for something, meaning a place for something, you don't, you know, bring in, in more. And so <laughs> tell it to my uh, dating life. Sort of <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love everything about this. Like to know that you collect shoes. It just excites me. <laughs> we got so many questions uh, for you coming on the show. People want to know what is the actual shooting schedule? Because what it seems like to the audience is you guys are there for three days. How long are these days? And where do you stay uh, between like on your off time? Do they put you in a local hotel? And what do you do once you're done filming for the day and you have to go back the next day? What do you do to, to relax? All these questions we, we got. So it's a pretty exhausting schedule because there's so much preparation to leave and keep my practice running. Uh, typically, we are flying out to very isolated locations where we have long drive times to get to the town that we're at. Sometimes the town we stay in, which, yes, is a hotel. Uh, can be a distance from the actual home. Uh, there's, it's actually four days of work. Well, actually, truth be told, it's five days of working with the person struggling with hoarding disorder in that there's an entire crew that goes in and films the first day, interviews them. The second day, there's interviewing family members and anybody who's important to kind of hear from. And then there is a three-day cleanup. So it's actually a seven-day oh my God. commitment that all of us give up from our family, from our work, from our friends, from, from your our shoes. animals. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's quite from my shoes. Yeah. I take it with me, though. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a big commitment to kind of be pulled out. And I, uh, I, I do... Well, I've done probably about 90 now with hoarders, possibly more oh over my, the past years. I can't even imagine years. that. We've been, wow. we were uh, on the ninth season, and we all do it because we want to help. And it, as you know, these are individuals whose lives are uh, so, uh, they're being taken over by this condition, and there's always a crisis. And the reason why we are selecting people that are in crisis is because the risk that they are facing is so big, losing their children, a loved one, their home, their job. and, and Their own lives at, have, some, at some times. 
what's that? The, their own lives. Like, they're in danger of their oh, own sure. life. Oh, sure. They yeah. can die yeah. in, in the stuff, absolutely. And there's many, many stories that we're hearing now. There was just one in Sacramento last week in which uh, ABC10 contacted me because uh, somebody died. And it, it's very real. And as much as you look at it, and I think people want to laugh and poke and you know, what's wrong with them. This is real stuff and it is mental illness. And we just have to understand that like depression or schizophrenia or any other condition, it's, it's caused by chemicals that cause them to have difficulty. And so, you know, kind of going back to your question of how can I do this? We just have to promote understanding of that. And so diverting from the question that you asked, how do we take care of ourselves? It is the most amazing, supportive team that we work with, and it's a very small team. And so at any given time, we pretty much, because most of us have been working together for the past six years, know each other. We really support one another. Um, you know, there's times, especially in animal hordes, because as most people know, I am very, very passionate about animals and welfare that I've had to, you know, tell the cameras I need a break, and I ducked behind a tree and started crying just because emotionally it's so painful to see the animal suffering. And then I pull it together and remind myself that they have an illness, and they're not meaning to hurt these animals. They're taking on these animals because they love them. They just can't see that it's better to give them up than to keep them in the environment. I'm so obsessed with you at this point. Like you're such a you're so amazing. So like after you guys film, do you guys go to like happy hour and just like yeah, throw some back wine, and be right? like, girl, Hell did you yeah. see that? Yeah. yeah. Are you are you guys able to unwind or are you always in this, you know, uh kind of nurturing mode? So no, actually, um uh, yes, no, all of the above. Uh we we are an incredibly cohesive group. We go out to dinner. We definitely have cocktails without a doubt. Yes, and definitely. um you know, and then there's nights where I just go, you know what? I need some quiet I just time. Need to go back. Yeah. I need to take a long hot shower and <laughs> uh you know, just kind of deep breathe and you know, call my husband and uh, you know, answer some emails and just be quiet. And other days we're just all like, oh my gosh, we need to go out, have a few cocktails, get a good steak or have some dinner. So, you know, it all depends, but we're all really good about taking care of ourselves because it's critical. I have been in temperatures of, you know, 118 degrees and I've been below zero. And, you know, on those days when you are working, uh, you know, sometimes 10-hour days, it is very physically and emotionally exhausting. And so each day kind of presents our own moment to figure out what we have to do to be able to get up the next morning at 6 a.m. and be back on set again, you know, to work a full day and to be rejuvenated to give our client uh, what they need. Well, I... I like I said, I'm just like, I want to hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in awe. I mean, that's like moving Well, when constantly. you come to Sacramento, you let me know. Well, girl, when you come to L.A., you let me know. <laughs> we're going to hey, go. Hey, well, we are, we're an hour and a half away, and I'm on a ranch, and I got my, my two horses and my donkey, and, nice. uh, you know, come on up, and we'll go for a ride and uh, hang out. I'll bring a case of wine, and we will sit, and we will chat. <laughs> Dr. Robin, tell, tell our listeners where they can get your book and where they can follow you. Of course. So you can always contact me if you want a signed book. And uh, my email is drrobin at atcsac.net. That's D-R-R-O-B-I-N at atcsac.net. My website is anxietytreatmentexperts.com. Uh, Facebook is Dr. Robin Zazio, and uh, you can always just Google my name, and I'm not too difficult to find if you miss any part of that. Well, thank you so much for joining our show. Thank you for being so open. Um, so is there a new season of Hoarders in, in process? Not right now. We just finished our last season, and it's aired, and we're just kind of trying to see what happens. But we sure hope it comes because... Uh, people like you who continue to showcase the importance 
of hoarders that literally saves lives, countless lives of people that would not have had access to resources otherwise. If we can continue to do that, then, you know, all of our missions to promote awareness, reduce stigma, and uh, help people is, is, is really going to be met. Thank you so much for joining our show. Uh, I'm going to follow you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. Say hello to your shoes and your husband. <laughs> In that order? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> good night, Thank Dr. Robin. Me. It was a true pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I just want to show our listeners one of her animal um, hoardings, and then, and then we're going to get uh, to it. Let's play that, and when we get back. On the season finale of Hoarders, I readily admit that I have way too many rats. People say, what would you ever want a rat for? Don't knock it till you've tried it. They're everywhere. They are coming out of the walls, out of the mattresses. He sees them as his children. This is going to be a lot harder than we thought. They just keep multiplying and multiplying. They're not going to stop. Hoarders, season finale, Monday at 10 on A&E. That was Dr. Robin's episode. Like that, uh, it, that it always, would be my mom's rat It, it always shocks me how they keep a normal life, and then they're from hoarders. the outside you wouldn't know. Even from the way that they smell, yeah. You know, you walk into a hoarder's house. No, and it smells so bad, but they don't smell that way in public. They're teachers. They're people. They're people, regular people. Yeah. My my uncle hoarded newspapers, but hoarding rats is like my first question is how do you find that much cheese? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think this guy bought like rabbit food or something, but he would go and feed them. He moved in this episode. He moved out of his own house to make room for the rats. It's crazy. It's like wow. like you and he had them all named. You hoarding strippers. What? <laughs> you are <strippers. laughs> Honey, that's called whoring strippers, not hoarding strippers. It's a completely different business. Um, Wesley, we have a question from the chat room. Thank you, Mama Rose. Uh, what was scarier uh, for you? Uh, your first time doing stand-up or your first time addressing for film? Uh, stand-up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a body's naked a body. in all way. Yeah. And I, I played sports growing up, so I was always used to like the locker room, I guess. So <laughs> that's given so I... many new fantasies. <laughs> <to our listeners. laughs> Did you do those same scenes in the locker room? <laughs> I haven't done a locker room scene yet, you know? They're they're casting me in the Star Wars type movies, but no no locker room. I would rather do I mean, you know, if I was asked, <laughs> I would rather do like a Star Trek parody or something. <laughs> me too. The costumes, the set, the yeah, pageantry. Yeah. yeah. Locker room, been yeah. there, done been that. There, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a priest. Uh, the, s- the snapping yeah. towel, such yeah. an old gimmick. I'm but, sure they need to. Uh, you, talk, you talk like you know. Is that how you hit some of your higher notes? <laughs> New yeah. CD coming out. Yeah, exactly. Locker room yeah. song. <laughs> <laughs> um, real fast, you can catch On the Rocks in your neighborhood. Uh, Overboard is here. Uh, the biggest Long Beach Pride party is on the Queen Mary, Saturday, May 20th. I will be there with a, a large bevy of different celebrities. Uh, you can get your tickets uh, at overboardlbc.com or you can email info at ontherocksradioshow.com. We will send you a VIP boarding pass uh, for this amazing event. Also, San Diego, I'm coming for you all day. San Diego, out at the fair, <laughs> uh, in partnership with Hillcrest Social. Yes. We, we take over San Diego Fair. I will be emceeing, live streaming on June 10th all day from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Wow. with performances wow. from Pepper Mache, cool. Kitty Brocknell, Ricky Rebel, and many others. Ricky! Uh, we love Ricky. Ricky's on, yes. oh, Ricky's he's on, on Reverie. Reverie. Yes. yes, he's been on the show many times. He's coming back on the show. We love Ricky. But he'll be performing, and I'll be there all day. And they put me right next to the beer tent. Okay. My, my only, <laughs> oh, my no, only no, thing. The problem. They know you. <laughs> I love to support the community, but the community needs to support me too. So if I don't get an appearance fee, <laughs> yeah. I need drink tickets or liquor. And they're like, "Oh, that's done." Because they're like, "Oh, we got a wave cheap." No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I've had people like, "Wow, that was an appearance fee, wasn't that?" I was like, "Yep, rack them up." Uh, OC Pride. I'm performing June 24th. I'll be singing uh, show tunes and telling stories. What? Uh, Really? I sing you Enrique. Are? I know. Yes. I've been doing oh, a show. I didn't know that. Yes. yes. Wow. I didn't yes. know you. I do exactly. musical theater, but I do like, I, but I sing Britney and Lady Gaga, but musical really? theater style. Sample? Wow. What about a no. drag? No. Have you ever done this? With you the done... costume and everything? Huh? With the, huh? Drag, drag. <laughs> Have you done no. drag? No. I was part of the WeHo uh, cheerleaders because they've been oh, around. Shit. They just celebrated their 30th anniversary. Mm-hmm. I was so ugly. They were like, hey, <laughs> thanks for your time. <laughs> Because I didn't want to shave, and I was I didn't want to put time in the makeup. I had like four eyebrows one day. No it, was, ponytail. it was awful. No, no, no. I'll tell you, it was really popular though with a certain crowd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> do I? Do I not? <laughs> Anyway. You always do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so I'll be there uh, singing um, 
at 4 p.m. That's my time slot. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Columbus Pride, I'm coming for you. Uh, Mid-July, I'll be emptying and live streaming with Megan Mullally from Will & Grace. Wow. That's going to be a good time. That's awesome. Um, all righty, so uh, let's get the show on the road. Actually, let's, I'm going to change things. Uh, let's give a shout-out to our sponsors so we can focus on the show. Test Loop. Test Loop is our tried-and-true sponsor. If you're traveling between L.A. and Palm Springs or L.A. and now San Diego, relax and leave the driving to our friends at Test Loop. They offer sustainable transportation experience with city-to-city -city travel and all-electric Tesla vehicles. Um, do you have to leave, Mark? No. Oh, okay. I'm here. I'm, <laughs> yes. You, you are I'm here in present. I'm sending someone for ice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of set we have. We have Spunk Lou, but we have no yeah. ice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys, My I've, ice I, girl. I, yes, I've I've traveled on Test Loop and it is the luxury experience. It's cheaper than an Uber, and you can't even imagine. Um, and prices starting at thirty nine dollars per seat on certain days. Um, go to testloop.com for more information. Our other sponsors, Hoochap, Hoochap. You buy one drink, and then for thirty days, they send you a free drink. Every single day. It's amazing. Oh, you like that. Oh, I wow. do. <laughs> and it's, it's based on your city, so they'll send you to a new bar with their signature drink every day. Oh, and nice. they've given us a code word, turnt up. That's the code word <laughs> they gave us. T-U-R-N-T-U-P. So you pay a dollar for your first month, and you get 30 free drinks. Turnt wow. Up. Yes. Oh, no, we turnt have to up. Of course, our tried and true sponsor, go. Spunk Lube. <laughs> Spunk Lube is featured on many sets in Hollywood, um, just not the ones you think of. A little dabble <laughs> to you. Gay, straight, in between. It does doesn't matter. Uh, this Do is I good stuff. Yes, That's everybody the goes. Oh. That's the hybrid, right? Wow. It says hybrid oh. lubricant. Yeah. How did you know? Don't ask. Wow. That's, That's how you keep the marriage alive. Right? Can we get the vodka. Thank back? you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got ice. Spunk Lube, honestly, this has been a sponsor since day one, and we love them. A small little business competing against other major businesses. Support them, spunklube.com. We all use it, so go, go yeah. buy it. I love it. It's yeah. the lube that looks like cum. Yeah, we actually use hey, that man, on. We have a family show uh, here. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't use that one. I'll show you a private video later. <laughs> This looks like luxury in a bottle. Yes. <laughs> White diamonds. I never leave home without them. <laughs> I have vodka and spunk lube. I think I'm in the 80s. Yes. <laughs> no. Wow. Wow. Who brought it? You'll be able to take it home to your lady friend. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, uh, also, our media sponsor, Bears, Cubs, and Scruff, in an Instagram account, and they celebrate uh, every type of mail, and they repost all of our stuff, so we love them. Go like them on Instagram. Um, speaking of Bears, I'm the new entertainment editor at Bear World Magazine. Um, in fact, they're coming out. Bear World yeah. TV. Yep. We're doing a launch of Reverie yes. in New York City at LGBT oh, wow. Biz Tech Week. But they're here this week, too. On the 17th. Yes, yeah. We're actually going to be premiering the new travel show. There's going to be a little preview during Out Web Fest on Sunday. Day in the Reverie block. I know that very well. That's awesome. Um, so you can look for my articles there. I'm giving sassy movie reviews, not the typical, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, this movie sucked, and this is why. Um, oh. But, uh, but I've, I've written about Chris Pat, uh, Pratt gaining weight, losing weight. What do we think about that? Uh, so look for my weekly articles. Thank you to our fashion sponsor, Swish Embassy. Swish Embassy. Not Swiss Embassy, but Swish Embassy. They do these pop culture t-shirts, so every week I'm showing you a different t-shirt. Last week, of course, was the Golden Girls. This one, Liza Minnelli Monday. Um, here she is on her yes. cabaret. But they do Golden Girls, Liza Minnelli, Mommy Dearest, Patti LaPone, all of these Ab amazing t-shirts. Ab Fab. Everything. And the t-shirts are so comfortable, you guys, and they fit. Where's you know, I'm, mine? I'm a little husky. They have women's clothing, but then they have for like the tight, whatever they have where they like, you know, every man will look good and woman would look good in a Swiss Embassy. Look them up. Also, um, our other uh, fashion sponsor, Zoo for the People, um, uh, they offer contemporary killer accessories for men with a great emphasis on detail and quality. They're also supportive of the wildlife conservation efforts of WWF and Wild Aid. And honestly, I hate doing bracelets because I'm enough with this. I'm like Nathan Lane <laughs> and Richard Simmons, whatever. I need like a bangly thing. But they actually do accessories that, that, that look masculine. I, I like them. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a wide good. variety. Um, so go check them out. Support them. They do a lot for the community, and they're one of our sponsors. Okay, let me formally introduce our guest for today. Uh, son of legendary Motown hitmaker Ron Miller, Mark Ar Arthur Miller comes by his talent honestly. Um, the singer-songwriter has a new CD entitled Soul Searching, which he co-produced with Peter Smith, featuring many of his dad's greatest hits, as well as the original composition, 87th and King, which uh, which I got a sample of, and it was amazing. Uh, and it's largely autobiographical. The title refers to the streets of the south side of Chicago, where Mark grew up with his mother, sister, and grandparents after his parents' divorce. Um, Smokey Robinson, The Miracle, Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, uh, Junior Walker, and The All-Stars, Marvin Gaye, were all the soundtrack of Mark Arthur 
Catherine Miller's young life growing up on Chicago's colorful South Side, where his family stayed put as the so-called white flight to the suburbs changed the neighborhood from white to black. A goldmine of culture experience was the result uh, in music, of course. Little did he know that the music that shaped his life was largely created by his father, Ron Miller, whom he reunited with as a teenager and often sang on Ron Miller's demos. Uh, Mark Arthur Miller will be performing at the Catalina Bar and Grill this Thursday, May 18th. Uh, at 8.30 p.m., which is a great space, and it's so perfect. In fact, we have a little clip we're going to show. Uh, so welcome, uh, Mark Arthur Miller. Yes. <laughs> also joining the show is Patricia De Leon. Patricia. It sounds like it's... it's, it's it, this is not a telenovela. No. <laughs> I've got to do it, God damn it! I never get to do it. I have white people on the show all the time. I ain't do it. It's, it sounds like a face cream I paid like $800. De Leon. For your face. <laughs> <laughs> Patricia is a Panamanian actress, TV host, model, and beauty pageant title holder after being crowned Miss Panama Hor. at a very... Did you just say whore? Holder. Oh, it's the vodka. I heard it too. Yes. You I heard her right? too. I yeah. heard her too. After Apple being crowned Miss Panama at a very early age, her career started blossoming, getting major breaks, hosting La Corte de Familia and La Corte de Pueblo on Telemundo, as well as its spin off, Juez Franco, on TV as Teca and the Billboard Latino. I have no idea what I just said. Uh, from her work on Univision, uh, De Leon obtained roles on American TV, including Lincoln Heights, Cold Case, Crossing Jordan, Men of a Certain Age, which those clips are on YouTube and awesome, and NCIS. She's a big supporter for uh, PETA uh, in the Hispanic community and believes in spreading the word and the benefits about being a vegetarian, but we still love her. <laughs> How do you know a vegetarian's a vegetarian? Because I tell you all the time. Uh, she currently plays... Uh, she currently plays an active role a, in stopping... I'm assuming you're not then. <laughs> yep. Does it look like I am? He likes me. I, had, I ate a slow-moving cat I just brought over there. I'm hungry. Uh, she plays an active role in stopping bullfights around the world uh, and was recently the image of PETA's campaign against bullfights, which we have pictures of. Also, uh, creator of her makeup line, which I want to wear because it's gorgeous. <laughs> Also, go with your tan and your glitter. I, yes, I, whatever the makeup is, you're not gonna look that good. I, I look like, <laughs> <laughs> have a few more. <laughs> I mean, I'm you're, gonna, you're cute, but look at this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look like George Hamilton in La Caja Fall, like by the end of the show. <laughs> also, welcome to the show, Damien. Be Bellagione. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. You did it. You did it. I love it. Even though we have this name, Canadian-born actor and casting director is the CEO of Reverie, the groundbreaking new LGBTQ digital content streaming service for Apple TV, Chromecast, Roku, and mobile devices. Previously, he has worked for top name brands like Chevrolet and Cadillac to develop new media opportunities for product promotion and marketing, as well as serving as adjunct professor for Columbia College Chicago and instructor at YouTube. With over 15 years' experience in the digital and new media world, Damien runs New Media Vault, Hollywood's largest entertainment and tech mixer, uh, and his own trending tech show, Boys in Tech. I thought that was something totally different. I thought I had rented that DVD, but you it's not. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 30 years ago. <laughs> Damien is also a member of the Producers Guild of America, New Media Council, serves on the LGBT National Committee at the Screen Actors Guild, and is a member of the International Academy of Web TV. A proud member of Start Out, Damien is passionate about supporting the LGBT c t community in both authentic media represent representation and entrepreneurship. <laughs> I could never be Bob or Walter, so I'd be like, who cares? That anyway. is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. When I should have sleep. Showed I actually don't sleep. That's why my that's my breaking out right now. <laughs> Literally, we work seven. I thought that was puberty. Puberty, that yeah. too. Yeah, uh, puberty at thirty six. That we're, I literally were. You gave your age. I no gay has ever age. done that on the show. Wow. Jay Rodriguez is like twenty five. Oh. Jay, Jay Rodriguez. Rodriguez. He's older than me. Um, no He's guy. not even family. No. I looked up his last he'll, name. He'll be outside waiting He's for like, you. Uh, yeah. He's about to cut me. He's he went to, to Ancestry.com. He's like all Irish. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's so little. Yeah. Oh, 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 poor thing. <laughs> he puts me last at karaoke nights. Oh, that's not cool. He hosted on Tuesday, so after the show, I'm usually by this time, so he knows how I sing, though he puts me last. <laughs> anyway. I no, wonder, honestly. I wonder yeah. why. Yeah. <laughs> you have so many different things going on. I how do. do you keep it scheduled? And you're married, 
so to speak. No, I, well, you know, it's funny. I say that I'm married, but we've been together 10 years. We're not legally oh, you're married. married. So yeah. we have an open After relationship. After 10 years, you're married. We have an open relationship. I'm going to go home with him later, probably. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm just As long as you. my other half can join. <laughs> ah, sure. Come Yay! over. Come this over. is this like a family show. Perfect. Hey, it, it was I'm going to get in it was so much trouble. Show. It was I'm, and I'm telling you, I, would, I, I've never I don't want to be there, but I'm going to film it. You want to? You can Facebook live it. Here, let me let me tell you. Or Reverie live it. I'm in so much trouble right now. Our apology to the Catholic League of America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be so we're the only straight. But this was the, the best room. idea that you have. I'm pointing at the the vodka. It's the name of the show because this made me very honest here. right now. This made me extremely honest. We need a vodka honest. sponsor. If anybody knows a vodka sponsor, we, two checks vodka. You should talk to them. They're sponsoring two OWF. Chicks? Yes, uh-huh. they're it's a lesbian vodka. <laughs> Oh, what's that mean? Oh, what's that face for? <laughs> we love that. No, we love, we love Two Chicks Vodka. <laughs> we absolutely love Two Chicks Vodka. It is I would love to taste their vodka. Does that mean it's and made from flowers they're gonna be an out, or something? Or out oh. white fuzz. <laughs> Listen. When you, oh, <laughs> oh, I almost <laughs> talked over my <laughs> This is such a great <laughs> this presentation is not, of this Reverie is Network. Not. Okay, I'm going to come down. Andrew, my head of communications, is over here right now. He's looking at me. He's like giving me the finger like, you got to stop. <laughs> No, you he's asking stop. for more vodka. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. I got a little excited. It's been a very long day. Um, so, you know, honestly, all of those things that you've listed, I don't do anymore. My focus right now really is only <laughs> Reverie. That's Great my marketing p- team. Uh, they sent I, me the best. Uh, no, that's I love my that you're so that's up my to date, Alex. No, I will say. <laughs> They're like, I, I, Damon just graduated from eighth grade. He won top, <laughs> <laughs> top notch. <laughs> that is right. You know, my first musical was The Wizard of Oz. I played the wizard. Did you really? I did. I think I like I the tights too much. I think that's not the best role, though. The wizard. <laughs> oh if somebody no, gave me the wizard, I'd be like, Ugh. I would have been better in Dorothy. But anyway, so yes. what I, what I, you're still looking really for that road, aren't you? Those ruby slippers, girl. But what I really, they're what falling I, out of your mouth in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you're not involved in any of those amazing things. No, well, no, I am still a member of the Producers Guild, the IAW TV. Um, I'm a, a member of the TV Academy of Arts and Sciences. I'm proud members of all those organizations and start out and out in tech. The one thing that I'm most proud about is what we're doing with Reverie. You know, what I did is like all, an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur really takes all of their experiences into one. And I feel like for the first time in my life, in the 15 and a half years that I've been here in Los Angeles, I really figured out what I'm meant to do in this war- in this world, not alone in this market. You know, Reverie is the first to market LGBTQ content content streaming platform. We're first on iTunes, on, um, sorry, on iOS, on Android, on Apple TV, on Chromecast, on Roku. Um, we have a web version. We're about to launch an Amazon Fire version, an Android TV version. We're about to launch, and this is an exclusive right here. <laughs> You ready for this? Yes. This is Are you ready for saying this? this publicly. Is your shirt ready for this? I don't know, but I borrowed <laughs> this from a friend. But I will tell I you. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Golden. Um, he's listening in South Dakota right now. But what I would like... He's South my, Dakota? He's, I'm so sorry, Golden. I know. Golden, we love you. We miss you. But um, uh, I will say this. We're launching the first and exclusive channel on Pluto.tv. And Pluto.tv is kind of a new skinny bundle. You guys have probably heard of like DirecTV Now. I've heard of anything YouTube, skinny. And YouTube TV. <laughs> I heard of skinny fries and I tuned out YouTube TV real fast. <laughs> and like, Play Sta- like PlayStation View. All these networks, basically, all the live streaming linear networks are becoming an app that essentially you can engage with multiple live channels. So Pluto TV has done something really extraordinary. What they've done is they've given it away for free, whereas all the other ones are subscription based over $35 to $50 per month. And this is completely ad supported. So Reverie is launching the first and exclusive LGBTQ network on Pluto to its 6 million unique visitors in the United States and Canada alone and coming to Germany and the UK. I'd like to wow. come to Germany. Dude, you don't even <laughs> know this, amazing. but uh, Alexander, let me tell you, you having your series on Reverie, you're in a hundred... I'm very blessed, by the way. Thank and you. we love you. You are like a highlight to us. You're like a gem. And I Oh, stop. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're saying you guys no, have podcasts. Stop. You have we web have series. Yeah. You have musicians. It's yeah. not just... But yeah. let me tell you, though, you don't even realize this. You're like, yeah, you're on Reverie. You're on all these other things. But just by being on Reverie, you're in a hundred countries across the globe. We syndicate to 100 countries. Countries. There are queer people in China, in Saudi Arabia, in Australia, there, in know. Africa who yeah. are listening yeah. to your show on Reverie right now, this very instant. That's not why just there's so Facebook. many jazz hands in Japan right now. I'm right? so big in Japan. Can you you got to learn how to speak Japanese. Yeah. And then, 
<laughs> yes, que- queer as we everything. Have, we have the British version of Queer as Folk on Reverie. Yes, which is so good, by the way. Better oh, than in American. fact, uh, Peter Page is coming on the show. Forgot to announce that. Yeah. Um, yes, and I love that uh, that this is on Pluto, the planet questioning. It's the planet. <laughs> it's <laughs> that the is correct. Planet. Are we? Are we not? So we launched the Pluto perfect. TV channel at LA Pride. We're doing a massive promotion at LA Pride. Um, you know, and and I think the greatest thing is that we are we are format agnostic and we are genre agnostic. So when you go to Reverie, you're going to experience something really truly revolutionary. You're not going to find a lesbian, gay, or bi or trans section. You're going to find comedy, drama, fashion, lifestyle, podcast, music, music videos. You can stream anything basically, and we're curated entertainment. So the real true, um, you know, unique offering that we have with Reverie is the fact that we're curating the best of the best in LGBTQ content, and that I think is what's really exciting for our subscribers. Let's play a, a little trailer that Reverie has put together that's just like in, in quick flash, yeah. which, 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 which I love this uh, trailer. Kurt. Here we go. Thank you, Kurt. It's like nothing else on earth. Right? It's fabulous. So cool. I got this email the Impressive. minute we announced you were on. I got so many emails. Are you serious? How do people submit their content? Right. So we get that question a lot. So the best thing is info at revry.tv, info at reverie.tv. Now we have a really amazing team. I just want to give a big shout out to my other co founders, Chris Rodriguez, my partner, um, chief business officer. He comes from, uh, he actually, actually he left his job as the attorney for Shark Tank. Because I was like, "Hey, Chris, we've got this great idea. Like, let's com- let let's do this." And he left that. Your job. company is uh, a combination of people from so many successful. Yeah. everybody's yeah testing this out. I mean, it's it's great. And Lashawn McGee, who's our chief Love production LaShawn. officer. How much? I mean, she is all things technical. She is sassy though. She Lashawn is sassy, but if let she me likes you. Thank God. If she doesn't. You're done. You're done. She is the thing that keeps the lights. She's the one that yes. keeps the lights on. LaShawn has an editorial production background. She comes from Selma, the amazing race. She's a, a vet. She's an African American, beautiful, gorgeous I lesbian. She was a vet. Yeah, she was a vet. Yep. Wow. She's a complete vet. And she went to AFI. She's an AFI grad. And then we have Aaliyah J. Daniels, another attorney. I've got two lawyers on my team. And Aaliyah, for um, the third year in a row, was named um, Rising Star by Super Lawyers and was just named in the top 40 African American lawyers to look out for in California. Wow. wow. And yeah. she is our, our chief operating officer and I have, of course, the fabulous Canadian, white, skinny, uh, Italian, whatever the hell you want to call me, CEO who came up with this crazy idea. We got together because we felt like we were not represented in media. When you look at other networks, other channels, they were not including like the true diversity and inclusivity of what Reverie really speaks to today but was not with other queer media outlets in the past. And it's no Tino shade to them. I respect and love everything they've done. Because you know what? If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. But the great thing about what we're giving with Reverie is a voice to the voiceless. And I'll tell a quick little story if I can. Two months after we launched, we actually had a... Um, big article on Macworld and it rippled into about six different languages, 55 articles across the globe. And a guy wrote in to me from Saudi Arabia. He said, I read your article uh, in Macworld. I downloaded your app. I'm a gay Muslim man who's closeted, who's afraid for his life, living in Saudi Arabia. And for the first time, I've seen myself represented in media. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Wow. You have no idea what hope you're bringing to the rest of the world. From a culture that his life is literally at risk. Yeah. You know, at risk. You know, we hear about gay bashings in West Hollywood and we're horrified, but people are being thrown off roofs. People are being killed for being who Chechnya. they're born. Yes. Like, come on. Like, like, And this is the great thing is apps are global. So the content that we're delivering through Reverie is a global thing. Like, I never dreamed in my, like, this, this whole iteration of Reverie in 
my wildest, like, you know, anything that you can imagine that we would be affecting a global audience. And that truly gives me so much excitement and hope and passion to wake up at 6 a.m. and be here at 7 p.m. Girl, your emails office. don't part until 1030, please. They don't. They You're don't. Watching... <laughs> I'm they totally don't. They teasing. Don't. No, no, it's true. But I wanted to talk about diversity because yeah. we're talking diversity with the LGBT community. But, Mark, you came from a whole different idea of diversity way back when. Number one, your dad was one of the only white songwriters from Motown who wrote some of the songs that Stevie Wonder, uh, that we all snap our fingers to, and Diana Ross. We know these songs. Your dad was was part of that. We have uh, pictures of your dad um, there. Oh, my God. But then also, but your own growing up, before you reconnected, you lived in this community with white flight. Everybody laughed, but your family stayed. Yeah. It was an all-black neighborhood. I was the only white boy that I can remember. Now, was it introduced to you as a young boy as, oh, we're, we're not going to conform, and, or was it just normal f- no, for you? No, it was you? just normal. Yeah, my, grand, my grandparents were uh, immigrants from Europe. My grandfather had come over from Germany. As I expected to Deutsch. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, in, in World War II, his house got egged and toilet wow. papered and everything. So all the things the black people went through, he went through because, you know, everyone figured he was a Nazi because he was here. So, you know, he wasn't going to leave because he had understood what it meant to be going through that. And I just stayed there. And, you know, all my friends were black. And, you know, to me, I was a little... Black kid. <laughs> did you get picked on, though, for being the only white kid in the neighborhood? Sometimes I did, yeah, absolutely. And then I had close, close friends. Uh, my closest friend since I was about five was uh, always stuck up for me. And, you know, uh, you know, he would even get called an Uncle Tom sometimes because of it. But uh, it was great. It was I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It was awesome. And you grew up with this with this music, with the rhythms, with with the with the with the voice. Um, how did you develop your own voice from all of this music that you were listening to? Because your voice, I have to say, when I got your tracks, I expected to hear something different. And I was I was surprised by this whole different voice that's reminiscent of, of what your dad did, but it's also this plaintive, gritty voice. It, it doesn't fit anything. How scared were you to start singing with your own voice? Uh, extremely. <laughs> I, I, I started out as an actor and a professional athlete and, and, and I just, the music was going to, I always tell people that I got to the music in this long path. Uh, you know, what I wanted to do first was sing. And I went through all these other machinations to get to what I finally wanted to do at a later age. Um, I, I, I think I had a great voice coach for the last 20 years who said, let's sound like you. And what I really felt in my heart from the beginning, which was the music I grew up with. Um, and then I started to create, uh, you know, basically what I wanted to do that was me, based on what your life is. You know, we all do things based on what our life is and what our experiences are. And m- music is the best way to, uh, music or, or art or acting or, or comedy, we have to like, we have to express ourselves and these amazing stories that we come from. No, oh, yeah, you have to find you have to find out who you are. But it was it was interesting because I was on the south side of Chicago and my dad had left, and so I was trying to convince all my black friends that the name on the label of the record yeah, was, was actually yours. my like, was yeah, actually right. my dad. Yeah, that's bullshit. There's so man. many Millers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> your dad. You know, yeah, exactly. So I think I got to it late. Um, I I started writing songs actually. As sad as this seems, after my dad passed, hmm. you know, because he was such a great writer, and I think I was a little intimidated. Well, you know, I mean, th- th- there's that. I mean, how do you start writing when? And you were singing on his demos, yeah, and and all that. For years, Patricia, we we're talking about d- diversity. Now you have experienced both sides. You've dominated the Latin market. Hello, you were Miss Panama. Oh, he said dominated. I yeah. thought he was talking about dominatrix, the one that I. Oh. <laughs> no, that's another show. <laughs> Okay, let's let's not go to my wish list. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh. I see. Oh. Let me tell you, there's been many couples that have come from this show. They're broken up on the show I too. Actually, I actually played one. That's the reason why I thought that you were talking. Yes, about I saw one. that clip. <laughs> you didn't play that. Like that. Can you send me that clip? Yeah, I even want to wow. see that clip. 
<laughs> but Patricia, for so, I mean, you, uh, Miss Panama, at age 19, which is so young, and you didn't just let it sit there. You were a host, then you moved on to acting, and you, you were in so many great projects acting, but you've done so well in the American market as well. What was that transition like? And Enrique, I know that you felt this as well. I'm big in the Latin American, and now I'm just like, oh, I have to audition? And I have to do this for the American culture. And I'm not auditioning. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't even speak English when I first got here. Yeah. Which well, is funny because accent. in papers. some of your roles, papers. you choose to use I your didn't accent. I have papers. Really? I got mine's on Alvarado Street. You know, when you walk on the street and they go like What this. do you mean, do you know? <laughs> Alvarado and Beverly, baby. <laughs> 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 Westlake Village. Oh. Of course, if you look like you, nobody asks for papers. Oh, no. Right? You're just oh like, no, no, no. Trust yeah. me, I look Latina, so they were like, so they offer them to you too? They were like, what? Are you serious? Wait, <laughs> what are you doing? No, they go oh, like okay. that. They offer them to you like that. Oh. So that, yeah, because they go like this, really. Like, oh. Showing the ID. They, they show yeah. them. Oh. So basically, yeah, you can... <laughs> What were you thinking? No, the, I, <laughs> at the way the show's going, I have. I have. <laughs> uh, but, 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 but in some of your roles, you choose to use your Latin accent, and some roles you choose not to. Oh, because I get, I like, I used to get cast a lot for like chachas or cleaning mm. ladies yeah. or nannies and all that stuff. So basically, they expect me to have a very thick accent. Uh, and I remember, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, how many parts did you play where your name was Maria? Oh, honey, most of them. <laughs> no, but no, it's no. true. I play cards named Wait, Maria. It's true, right? I have a Latin oh, actress went, friend who's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just kissed a girl named Maria. Maria. It's bad. It's Con, bad. Conchita. Consuelo. Consuelo. No. Which is funny. We've had Maria Rosa. Conchita on the show. Oh, it's racial profiling. <laughs> oh. This went from this went from nice to dark. <laughs> but but it also takes a choice. Like, do I? Love I Maria. No, I love her too. She was on the show. <laughs> Didn't understand anything she said, but she was amazing. Oh. But you have to make a choice we, as we to. We just drink some more vodka here. <laughs> <laughs> but there comes a point. Is like, do I take these roles? You know, to make money and establish myself as an actress. And you that's have what, you've no, been no, on. No, no, no. This seventeen on. years that's ago. That's pretty much what it was. You yeah. know, you play the like either you know the word. The janitors, the, the cha-cha, the prostitutes, the, the hookers, that's pretty much what it was. Oh. Yeah. You've been on the cover of Maxim, you've been on the cover of so many magazines. What I wanted to do was show such a juxtaposition of your personalities. I wanted to play um, from one of your magazines. Why do we have to start with that, with that one? <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on this show, honestly, our listeners are from all over. What? Kurt, I want to play the clip uh, from the magazine shoot, and then I want to also play the clip uh, from one of your dramatic scenes where you use the American accent. Um, yeah. Here we go. And I don't think that's the one. <laughs> I'm launching a campaign very strong with the organization PETA. It's a campaign against the toros. And we're going to make the photos a little sexy. Sorry, it was so start, start at the beginning. Amigos, there Patricia we go. Patricia de León, and today I'm going to do your figure nitida. Our figure nitida, además de ser una de las actrices más sexys de la pantalla, ha sido modelo Miss Panama, presentadora de noticias. Okay, so that's very sexy. Yeah, that's not drama. There's no drama there. Wait a minute, no, what I wanted to do is show this. This is a whole career, beautiful model. So juxtapose this next to uh, your your dramatic uh, turn. And this is what I love about uh, your, your acting. There's, there's another clip, Kurt. Come Kurt, on. We, just Come on, went, Kurt. we just went from a family on, show I know. to this. <laughs> Maxim models, porn stars. Yeah, Come on, Alexander. Yeah, 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 I, I no. never really um, thought this was no. a family show. <laughs> I guess I can't really call myself old, a star. Old dirty you know men me. in the corner. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really a star, though, if you didn't even know who I was? So what? I'm not really a star if you didn't know who I was. Why? Why should all gay men know who porn stars are? We'll have a whole conversation. <laughs> Where did you get so that, sorry. by the way? There's two clips. Where did you get well, that? I, 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 I don't even think that I've ever seen that. Anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've I, been I, your I, friend I, for I, years. And yeah, I've and never I've never seen, seen that. I'm glad I saw it. <laughs> 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 I'm not mad at it either, honestly. Anyway. Wow. You look good? No, there's there's a dramatic scene uh, where you've lost your son uh, who goes missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's anything. It's, it's, it's like so everybody sorry. everybody goes from like, 
you look like this, but I get cast all the time for like characters that I wear no makeup whatsoever. And you were in tears for the whole like, thing. Very dramatic. Yeah, literally. No, no, no. I would totally clip, cast right? you as like someone like like in a tra- Texas trailer park, and you have to learn how to do a Southern accent. <laughs> would you play that role? I would yeah. play anything. You right? could just like, come stay at the ranch. Do, and you'd have it no Like time. the whole thing. Like honestly, I think the the biggest thing right now in Hollywood should be anti casting. So yeah. it's like absolutely yes. Absolutely. So do not cast a uh, cast against type. No. So we could actually see what you can do. Exactly. Right. Exactly. No, okay, I'm gonna cast you in something. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do a project okay. together now. Go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. You've been cast on Reverie. Andrew, take a note. Done. Witness. Yeah. I got witnesses. You've got witnesses. <laughs> it's on camera. And I'm not gonna be playing Conchita. All right. I'm no. so sorry. <laughs> You're gonna be Mary Jane or Very something good. like that. Something Very really. Good. Oh, English. I believe Mary Jane has been on set <laughs> tonight. <laughs> anyway, we, we we have the clip. This this is, it was supposed to go right into that. So here's it's a big yeah, yeah. punk now. Play play play. <laughs> <laughs> I know how hard this must be. Let me get you something to drink. Come sit down over here. And you have an American accent in in this. I know you. Do you? You tell Reese's mother, your son is a Shiloh. He tormented my effort. He's dead now, thanks to your son. Tyree's in jail, and he didn't kill your son. Your son is a monster. Sophia, come Look on. here, sweetie. Jen, is everything okay? Yes, but please escort Mrs. Marks to exam room three. I'll stay here with Miss Munoz. Okay, right this way, please. Come on. Here, take this. I'm gonna prescribe something to help you relax, okay? Is there someone you want me to call? No. There's no one. I'm alone now. That's good work, girl. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for this. But time. I think it's part of being a Latin oh. actor is you have to be prepared to do all things great. Oh, we got the applause. Yeah. <laughs> because then you knock out your photo shoots unbelievably. How do you prepare for each thing differently? For for this acting where you had to be dramatic, how do you prepare differently than when you have to be in front of the camera being a strong woman with your photo shoots? I'm Latin. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes naturally? So are you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pre-requis- I don't have photo shoots like you do, though. I'm Latin. Yeah. Pre-requis- yeah. Enrique has his on Instagram. Yeah. He's like, let it see. Let it see. over the I, shoulder? I, oh. I, I, the the I strong the shoulder, and the too. drama comes by birth. <laughs> Literally, like literally, yeah, it comes by birth. So, and then the rest, honey, like drama, I've killed my parents, the kids that I don't have, the husband <laughs> I don't have, so many times, wow. so many times. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it, it, it's that's how I prepare. It, is it hard for men to date you because they're so intimidated that you come to the table with all of this? Oh boy, maybe <laughs> you need to answer that, Enrique. <laughs> yeah, it's a little complicated. Men get threatened, they get yeah. really threatened. Uh, when you look at this, I'm threatened with you just sitting here. Yeah. 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 Now it, it's 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 tough, and it's things are getting so tough now with like all these apps and stuff is like so available, you know. So everybody, every time I go to an interview or something, they they ask me exactly the same thing, or, or they ask me, "Oh, I'm sure that you have tons of men after you," or "How come you're not married? There's some yeah. there's a problem with you." There's a problem with you. You don't have, ma- you know, never be married well, or have you dating a Latin though. <laughs> She's a little crazy. <laughs> it's an old Jewish wives' tale. <laughs> Oi, Gavalt. <laughs> Oi, Gavalt. Oy. Are you happy with your You're crossover Jewish, from the Latin market to the American market? Yeah, I just, you know, like, um, there's still that stereotype of, like you were saying, like, uh, you know, playing the typical Latina, you know, or like I walk into rooms and they're like, Oh, you know, we like the accent, but now can you do like a Puerto Rican English accent or like yeah. a Cuban? I'm like, like, dude, this is it. You buy the package. It's like the Middle Eastern like culture, though. They're like, oh, do this person. Like, they think they know what it is. And it's like, no, this represents a whole thing. And Enrique, you've, you've done with this, yeah. uh, dealt with this too. Like, oh, yes, in the American market, you, you're, you're taking off, but then you get drawn back to Latino market. You can do this show for this well, amount of money. You have to be on set for 10 days. The, do I do it or do I just stay? Well, the thing about it is that if you can work both markets, why not? Yeah. Which we're blessed enough to speak Spanish and English. So you can go back and forth. You can barely yeah. speak you know? English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with teachers like you. Yeah. Oh. At the chapel at the Abbey on a Sunday, he's like, oh, please. 
It's Not the old way, but I'm like, it's Nikki. Or, no, it's, uh, oh, God. Don't, wor- don't worry, Alex. I'm going to take you to Alvarado Street. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I love that because they have the best mole. I live mole. on and Temple, so I'm real close to Alvarado. I know exactly what you're talking about. There you go. They have oh, the only good Olvera. mole in town. Oh, Alvera is a whole other part of town. No, they have great mole. And yeah. it's by the train station. I could get out real well, quick. That's <laughs> touristy. At least I can, I can speak. He's got his nose buried in some strippers, but but oh! no, 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 no. We we thank you for that. We thank you for that. <laughs> as long as there's dollars attached. I do to have the a rather large like, nose. Like, <laughs> make it rain. No, but yeah, oh, it's like the fact that you can work on both markets is is a blessing. You know, but it ta- does it take a certain different approach? Obviously, you can't bring that telenovela bigness. Yeah. It's a different it's, genre. But you're saying I, I went from the funniest thing is I actually started here. And then jump into the Spanish market. Yeah. You know, what's funny is they probably said, do more, do as more. An yeah. And so people I, assume, oh, Telenovela is overacting. It's not because when you watch them, they really, when they slap somebody, they really slap somebody. I, I remember going to my first day. I literally, I, I was coming from here. So I'm like all pale, like a chubby, you know, a chunky monkey. I get there. You're not I'm a like, chunky monkey. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, I was like a chunky monkey compared when? to the girls that were there. <laughs> compared to the girls that were there. No, no. So I get there and I'm all white and I look at these women that they look like, you know, the Loompa Loompas, you know, that are all, <laughs> that, are, that are all like, you know, orange. They're orange and they have oil and they go into these things and then their butts are like big and their boobs are all the way here and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get fired <laughs> like right now. So I remember starting my first day, I get called up. I go from location, you know, from doing my first scenes on the, on the, and then I get called in and then I walk into this room and there's like 10 of the producers and they're like, and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I'm going to get fired the first day. So I love when Latino people curse because it sounds so different. It's <laughs> yeah. So so I'm, he's like, they're like, well, it's not work. You know, the scenes, are, they're not working out for us. I'm like, what is not working? So I, I already went like this, you yeah. know, like a little snake. And I'm Defensive like, mode. yeah. So they're like, they're plain. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> she used her HBO voice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you elaborate? He's they like, thought elaborate was a Spanish word. <laughs> 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 elaborate, party, tequila, then. Yeah. So, wow. so, yeah, so they're like, well, it's just, we're not, you're not projecting. <laughs> you're not projecting. I'm like, what, what, what am I, a pistol? <laughs> like, what is this, you know? And now, no, they wanted me to, I'm like, oh, what you wanted me is you wanted me to be one of those clowns that you hire here. Literally, I went off that, that bad. It was that bad. And they're like, um, please don't get upset. And and then... We, oh, please don't we, get upset. No. And then they're Tell like, that to a Latina and, or a Latina. You're going to get upset. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No. You're done. You're done. You're done. It, you're didn't, done. it didn't finish there. I mean, they're comes like, with a contract. Uh, we don't know if the shorts that they're putting you on you are too tight or there's just like a little fat coming out. No. Ah! No. no. So... Come so, on. So I went from from literally almost killing him to like literally killing, killing him. him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I'm sorry. What did you just say? I said, I'm sorry that you don't have really qualified wardrobe people here. You know. <laughs> Whoa, that is some tea, girl. <laughs> so, she so, didn't spill the tea. She, she made it and kicked it off herself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was really, it was really hard shade. for me to come yeah. from here to there because here it's all about like you know how talented you are. There it's literally like how you look. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's how you look. As long as you know how to read. Literally, I, I have people, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but I actually have girls that I was working with that I like, had a like a baby suit, you know what I mean, like a pregnant suit, and she's like, "Oh, we have ear, they have ear prompters, prompters. Yeah. ear prompters." Wow. They use ear prompters. I don't believe in ear prompters in anything on Broadway. You know, Al Pacino used them on Broadway when oh, he was there. They just you accused cannot. they just accused Johnny Depp of um, using them. I I would like not believe that about it, Johnny Depp. I wouldn't believe it either. So but anyway, so, so, so the girl, you could hear the guy whispering like, uh, she's like, oh, why am I going to the hospital again? And I'm going to think, oh, this is so stupid. <laughs> I'll still be dope. <laughs> yeah, she has, the, <laughs> she has the suit. And the guy's uh-huh. like, honey, because you, you, you're pregnant. I just wanted to slap her. But the funny thing is when... I would want like a high-pitched gay guy voice though in my earpiece. <laughs> but when, if I was... Hello. Hello. Maybe that's my new calling. I'll be that person. Stop. When, when yeah. tel- <laughs> but Stop when tel- it. I love Mark <laughs> Arthur <laughs> Miller's bringing it. When tel- Stop the it. The straightest person here. I should do here. this straight. <laughs> when telenovela actors audition <laughs> here, you've seen a couple. 
Oh my god! So I because I they're so big. Into, so I bump into one of them, and and yeah. I'm sitting outside. You bump in or you push one over, right? Because <laughs> I've <laughs> so seen you. I'm, I'm sitting <laughs> outside not. waiting, right? And then all of a sudden, you see this girl comes in, comes in with her little suitcase, and I'm thinking. And then my, this other actress is very well known. She goes and says, "Is she a stewardess?" I'm like, <laughs> "What?" I'm like, I'm like oh. "Just because she's in every hotel from here, so whatever." That was <laughs> Leave a tip at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Like, with me. Yeah. So this is an audition where she has to actually change on a like lingerie because the scene is like she goes from like she changed normal. during the audition. So she changed in the audition. Yes. That's she the went, story. She put on lingerie in the yes. audition. Were her boobies out? I put their boobs out. Everything. The, like everything. I love wow. how Damien's all boobies. She's like, boobs? <laughs> you know, my, my voice got higher so there? Yeah. And hers got lower. So goes, it's so weird. So I'm so, never so, in the so right ca- place. So, ca- <laughs> <laughs> so Cassie goes and sa- she goes and tells Cassie, she goes, should I change in the room or should I change outside in the bathroom? <laughs> Wow. And I'm like, girl, you should just need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> get out of Dodge. But this is all storytelling that we use for our career. And Mark Arthur Miller, all great stars have three names or one name. Sharon Madonna, <laughs> James Earl Jones, three. Philip Seymour Hoffman, three. three. Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> You're almost there, girl, after a few three. more. Charles, please. <laughs> What I wanted to do was play a little bit of the Tracks of My Tears, which you played at at Catalina, which is also your version of storytelling. And you sing the song with this unique voice. So let's, let's... Let's hear it. Yeah. Take a good look at my face. And this is a live performance. I thought we had more to that clip, honestly. I'm so sorry. That was short. Yeah, that was really short. Anyway, but <laughs> this is the kind of voice that you put in storytelling, everything. And, you know, you come from a Motown family, but you tell the story very differently. How do you sit and put a show together? And, Patricia, this is what I'm talking about in telling the story. How do you develop a character? How, how, what is that process like for you? Um, for me, it, it was uh, the album was always going to be a tribute to the music I grew up with, which was Motown, my father's music, and then. But, but there's my a part music. of that should, should be so scared that like, like Liza Minnelli singing Judy Garland songs. That's so dangerous. No, no, no. You have to listen. I I listened to your. Your, it's totally your album. It's completely different. Th- completely. Yeah. It's like yeah. the, your honey. Th- I did listen. Th- yeah. th- well, yeah. Yeah. No, I know that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. He listened. I got it sent to me for free. I wouldn't have been on the show unless he listened. Yeah. <laughs> he paid yeah. for it. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> no, right. He got it free. Yeah. No. The idea was you got a lot of things free, honey. If you do, yes. if you do anything that is as <laughs> iconic as the Motown classics, which is a classic from Smokey or a classic from Marvin, if you're going to do those iconic songs, you can't do the same arrangements that they do, right? Because <clears throat> they've done it already and they've done it better than you'll ever do. So it had to be my interpretation of what those songs meant to me when I was growing up. So all the arrangements were based on how emotionally they felt to me when I was a kid. So I actually took those memories and those feelings and rearranged everything with Peter Smith, who's a genius, uh, and my co-writer of our songs that we wrote together, and rearranged it because to me, it's, if you're going to if you're going to do Sinatra, you don't take Nelson Riddle's arrangements and do Sinatra. Um, you do them differently, or then don't do them because they've already been done so well. So I tried to make everything as different as I possibly could, you know, to make it. Your no. presence on stage is amazing. It's sexy. It tells this plaintive story. Um, you're a hit. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a. I think it's a good story because it's a, it's a story of fathers lost and found. You know more than anything else, wow. which is makes it great. So let me ask a personal question because I'm totally inappropriate. You were estranged from your dad, and then in your teen years, you reconnected. Moving to L.A. from Chicago, what was that even like in your mind? As a teenager, we have so many things to deal with on our own. Puberty, the yeah, breakout, sex, everything. How did, how did you even put I that? I didn't see him for 10 years. 
So I came to L.A. after not seeing him. We reconnected from 6 to 16. I didn't see him. And then we wow. reconnected after 10 years. And, and then about eight months after we reconnected, I moved out here with him because Motown had left from Detroit and came out. Yep. And, and I moved with him after we were totally strangers. And then I came out here and had all that sex you were talking about. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mean, I knew why I came to L.A. <laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, yeah. Was it weird reconnecting, though, to a father that you didn't really yeah, grow like, up with? How do you start that process? Yeah. It, it was, you know, my, I, I tell the story sometimes in the show, but my, my sister had found him. She, my sister was selling circus tickets, uh, you know, doing, you know, the, on the phone. She was selling tickets to the circus, like, and she decided to call Motown Records in Detroit, and then she didn't get him there, and they had said Motown had moved to L.A. So she called Motown trying to sell circus tickets, and she snuck in some long-distance phone calls, and she f called Motown in L.A. and said, can we leave a message for Ron Miller? Are you kidding? Wow. wow. True wow. Story. That's amazing. And he said he's not in, but we'll leave him a message. So my sister left the number. And then we waited by the phone, and he actually called us back. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. What and was that phone call yeah. like? Oh, my God. It, it's undescribable. I mean, we were all, like, crying. I mean, we sat huddled by the phone like, is oh. my dad, who I haven't seen in 10 years, going to call me? And he did. And then we met at the airport, and my sister always told the story. She was so scared. There was this ramp at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. My dad flew in to meet us, and I hadn't seen him in 10 years. And there was this ramp, and he's walking down this ramp, and my sister's huddled behind a corner, scared to death. And I literally ran into his arms. Wow. Mm. I mean, I, forg I forgave the mother nugget. Yeah, but as kids, like, we're <laughs> yeah. so hungry for these type of right. figures. So and I just, like, needed, need my, I just needed my dad. So I wasn't going to even think about what he hadn't wow. done or what he hadn't been. Or, well, and it's already, yeah. like, pressure enough. With parents being a teenager growing up, becoming a man, all this thing. You did the tracks for him too, yeah. correct? That must have been so, like. That would have been like, I, I, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. Yeah. What was the feeling when you were the like, pressure. oh, when he said, hey, can you sing the demo on this and you stepped into the booth? What, what did it feel like? Well, you know, that was that that happened years later, and uh, we had a, 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 a wonderful relationship by that time. You know, I had come to singing really late. I was an actor at an, a theater company in Chicago, and I opened up the Road Theater Company here in Los Angeles. I was strictly an actor who was dying to sing and do music my whole life. And finally, I started singing. I had nose surgery. I, I had a, broken my nose three times, so I had things, and everybody started saying, why aren't you singing? And my dad said, oh, my God, what are you doing? Let's start going into the studio and sing. So that came late in my life. I was strictly an actor who always wanted to sing. And then people started saying, wait a second, if you sound this good, you should start singing. Well, singers should be actors because you tell a story. Right. You know? Yeah. And yeah. that's my dad's thing. You know, my dad always would say to me, he goes, don't fall in love with your voice, fall in love with the lyric. Hmm. Or actually, my wow. dad, wow. my actually, dad, my dad said, "Don't fall in love with your voice. Fall in love with my lyric." <laughs> 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 so that's what he actually said. But yeah, so I think I came from a better place as a singer because I wasn't. I never thought I could really sound that good, and so it was always about telling a story as an actor. And then I trained so much with the voice coach that I've had for over twenty years that the voice sort of followed the actor. So I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. Patricia, mm -hmm. what was your inciting event or that you knew that you wanted to be an actress and you had this passion to share? <clears throat> How do you want to be an actress? Oh, you by were the Miss way. Panama at 19 years she old. She studied law. She, she was going to gonna be a lawyer. Oh my really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow. Because it's, the thing is, because you wanted home, to sue all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I seen her eyes. She's like, lawsuit, 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 yeah. lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, back home. My dad, he's a farmer, so back back home for him is, is you know, in the Panama mach, the machismo thing. It was basically either you're a lawyer or you're a doctor, otherwise you're a loser. <laughs> That's basically that how my wow. dad thought about wow. it. You know, so I told him when I mean, we graduated, is my sister and I, and um, we sat down and he said, "What do you want to do?" And I said, "Well, I want to do news." And he's like, he turns on the TV. Who and says that? <laughs> I want to do news because that's what I wanted to do. That everybody wanted, has a dream. That's crazy. Though. But everybody I has a dream. To, I wanted to be, hey, like, hey, what's up with that? So <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I wanted to be a news anchor and a reporter. So all of a sudden, um, he, he turns on the TV 
And this guy, his name, I still remember his name, Justino Gonzalez, he's like being pushed because he's trying to like, like interview a, a, a politician. He's like, that's what you want to do? Chase the people that has money in this country? I don't think oh, so. Wow. So you either, you either choose this or well, business administration. So my sister's always been very fast. So she's like, oh, I'll take business. And I got stuck with law. <laughs> so, so, oh. so, so I. Draw, and, draw. Yeah, it was horrible <laughs> because I, I was literally like doing the Miss Panama thing. I was I was a flight attendant. That was my first. real like What airline? Wow. Copa. Oh, OK. Copa. I haven't flown them yet. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> anything is really good at this point. If we haven't heard about them, then that's <laughs> <yeah>. great. <laughs> ah. Well, we haven't dragged anybody out of the plane. So, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so the thing was, um, I I was doing that, and I was like, I hated it. I hated it, and I I would never study, and I was always trying to cheat on them. Like I was like, oh, you know, I didn't. Oh, I'm sure boys then. wouldn't say, don't yeah. cheat on me, girl. No. <laughs> Come on over. Yeah. So, so I was like, oh, like that, and then I don't even know how I went through, like, through law school. Like, how did I even pass my classes? Because I was just like that. So, um, and then one day, I'm like, I'm done with this. I'm going to go and do a tryout. So I, I showed up at the network. I didn't even have an appointment because they wouldn't give it to me. So um, Who does this, though? She does. Listen to this story. Yeah, this Listen is. to this story. So, so I showed up, and, and like I put on a dress, and I put on my makeup, and I'm like, this Thank is gonna work you. as long as I have my makeup. I on. did that. I put on a makeup address. <laughs> nobody would see me. <laughs> so I showed up, and the girl was like, "Oh, do you have an appointment?" I'm like, "No, but you wouldn't give it to me." So and I'm like, "Listen, I'm come, I'm here to, to see Peter Diaz. That was the guy who's in charge of the network." So he's like, "Well, he will not see you unless you have an appointment." And I'm like, hmm, "We'll see." So I'm Woo. like, "Where where is his his office? Is right here, right?" So I sat there for hours. Until he wow. came out. That's so, like a you story. Held out. Yes. So he came out and I'm like, excuse me, are you Peter Diaz? And he goes, Yeah. And you are? I'm Patricia DeLeon. And I'm here to see you. He goes, Do you have an appointment? I say, No, because she wouldn't give it to me. Anyway, oh. so, so <laughs> Guys, this I is like it. this is like an old Hollywood story. Yes, yes I love this. This is like a living I, telenovela. So totally. It's like feud between Patricia and the world. <laughs> I'm waiting for the slap. <laughs> I'm waiting for the slap. So, so then he goes, he's like, give Some me a minute. Right so now. I finally go in and I'm like, he goes, Have you ever read a teleprompter? And I'm thinking, the heck is a teleprompter? I'm like, sure. Professionals don't I need have. that, honestly. <laughs> of course I have. I've had. Of course lie, I have. Lie. I, no, because my mother always said to me, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that. <gasps> do you know how many roles that has? Yeah. First yeah. Role, well, I rule. Do you ride a improv. horse? Yes, of course. I First rule of improv. Ridden horses. Say yes. Yeah. Never You've ridden a lot of horses, though, honey. Yeah. That's different. I never say no to a role. <laughs> <laughs> Like, rent is expensive uh, uh, in L.A. Like, what do I got to do? I know, right? I'm kidding. Sorry. So, well, that, That's uh, another show, because I have a few that I would, like, tell them no. <laughs> that, actually, that actually got me in trouble, though. Oh, girl. Because I don't know how to ski, and I remember coming here, oh. and then I, 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 I didn't know how to ski, and then they I went to this commercial casting, and they booked me, and they're like, you do know how to ski, right? And I'm like, of course. Oh, <laughs> Do they have snow oh, in Panama? No. Of course not. <laughs> I'm from Canada. We they have barely have everywhere. Panama in Panama. Big, yeah. 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 Olympic skiers degrees. coming from Panama. Uh, I don't know. I've never degrees. been to South America. I'm from like, Canada. We have so, snow everywhere. So anyway, so go back to the story of this guy. So he he literally he comes. I, I so I'm like, yeah, of course I'd have done whatever you just said. And he's like, okay. So I said, well, I want you to do a tryout. I want to do a test because I dressed up for it. So so he's like, are you always like this? I'm like, like how? He's like like this, like pushy. I'm like, well, if you want to call be it honest, that way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. So, That's how so you, anyway, yeah. so he made a phone call. He's like, oh, you know, set up the camera so we can do. So I go into the studio on my hands. I swear to you. I, I don't know. I was There was something really wrong with my body that moment because. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been was, anything wrong I, with you. Never. I, yeah. I was falling apart. So I got and I sat on that chair and I saw that box with the letters and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm like, can you please put the box closer? And he goes, and the camera guy goes, the, the camera? I said, yes, whatever that is, just put it closer. Okay. That's when I realized that I actually, I was blind because I couldn't see from far away. So so I did the test and I remember I was sweating like a cow. So I was, I got out of there and I go to the office and I'm like, he goes, I just saw the tape. It's not that bad. I said, see, I told you, I'm really good. <laughs> <laughs> But told you, girl. These are Hollywood stories. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got the part. Yeah. So anyway, 
anyways, no, because he didn't have a position for me. So, <laughs> so the worst. Part, <laughs> all this, all this for nothing. This. Typical <laughs> Latina woman. <laughs> Let me tell you a long story that doesn't so, no, doesn't no, result in anything. No, no, no. Yeah. Time out. My mom is a fan of that yeah, story. No, time out, time out. What happened? No, but was, I love this. This is the plight of a Hollywood woman, and we're learning this. So, so then he goes. So, so he goes. Well, um, it's like an end. We don't. We don't really have a position for you. And I'm like, oh, you made me come here, do all that thing, try that thing, and now you don't even have a position for Woo. me. He goes, he started laughing. He goes, well, I have the weather girl. Oh, oh. there it is. There you go. Full circle. What? She started. So it was, I'm telling you, the weather is the worst, worst, the worst job on television. The yeah, worst. Yeah, but you that built was like up three. your, 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 so. First of all, you had to, you had to literally media dress like up. a slot. Back, back, back Wait, home. can you say slut one more time with that accent? Slut. Yeah, that was awesome. So, anyway. There's going to be a new podcast on you Reverie called Slut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but to die for it. To then, die for it. That's worst, exactly yeah. what it's about. Like That's fan sent. Yeah. Back home, we, don't have, we didn't have the technology to whether we know whether it was going to rain or the sun was going to come out. So I will have to flip coins every morning. Was There's a balloon. So, and it's like the balloon hot? comes up, the balloon goes yeah. down. Yeah, exactly. It's going to rain. It's not. We're good. So it was literally like that. And I remember like going on the street and they're like, oh, you missed it again. It, <laughs> and I'm like, just, just idiot. Of course. I but missed to it. all our listeners, like, then we see like that dramatic content that you do. And yet you're a real actress. This is for everybody. We have to do everything yeah. in this community. Mm -hmm. You can't just be an actor anymore. You have to be funny. You have to be an actor. You have to do your own graphics. You have to Say do yes. so much. Yes, you say yes, and then you never give up. I just think that that's that's the really well, and that's brilliant. a perfect. Yeah, never give up. I have some of my friends. All I want to be in entertainment, I'll be in Hollywood. They don't want to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. It takes hard work. Um, I forget. I think it was Amy Schumer that said, "I'm the most successful overnight." Sensation that took 38 years in the making. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. It's always like that, though. So, Damien, to that point, I want you to talk about Out Webfest. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's the crazy thing. I would like to, I to echo Amy Schumer. I feel like it's been 36 years for me in the making, and it was what, and, and it, it isn't until now that I really discovered what my true, like my 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 true passion is. But also on top of that, like what my true power is in this world. Out Web Fest is something else that we created with Reverie. Andrew's having another drink right now. He's like, pour <laughs> me some more vodka. Um, Out Web Fest is the first LGBTQ web festival. Web Fests are all over the world. They have them in South America and Europe and Africa wow. and Asia. And they represent digital short form content. So we created another first to market opportunity. We created Out Web Fest last year. We had a little AFI. We had about 35 different works that we screened from all over the world. We had people come from Australia, from Canada. This year, we are partnered with YouTube. Our opening night wow. is this Friday. Oh, hello, I will be there. Honey, you'll be on the, you'll be on the pink carpet. Yes. interviewing big celebrities. But what you don't know is we have Access Hollywood, Entertainment Weekly, wow. Time Woo! Magazine, Pop Sugar. Andrew, who am I missing? Like, right. but I'm like, Andrew's <laughs> like, I'm at the YouTube she's drunk offices. Right now. Like I'm going to sneak lot. into the offices and open up the drawers. Honey, like, we got lots. I'm but here's the most important thing. YouTube supported Out Web Fest in its second year, a web festival, a festival of any kind in its second year. And it's being completely sponsored by YouTube. Our opening night, we're screening the Sundance uh, premiered film about Gigi Gorgeous's transition, directed by Barbara Koppel, an Academy Award winner. Wow. And it was nominated on Sunday for Best Documentary in the MTV Movie Awards. Unfortunately, she didn't win, but we love you, Gigi, and we support you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is our next appearance in screening since the MTV Movie Awards last Sunday. But we have something really important that we're doing without WebFest this year. Reverie has created the Reverie Visibility Awards. And the Reverie Visibility Awards recognize the vanguard, the vision, and the velocity. And that's really the past, the present, and the future. And what I mean by that is Tyler Oakley is winning the Vanguard Award this year. He'll actually be there. Um, to we accept have some of the pictures, yes. Yeah, well, he'll be there to accept the award. Um, Gigi Gorgeous is accepting the Vision Award this year, and Ari Fitz. And you guys all should Google Ari Fitz right now. A R I F I T Z, because Ari Fitz is our Velocity Award winner. She is gorgeous. She came from the real world. She is a rising star in the YouTube influencer world. She's lesbian and polyamorous, and she is absolutely stunning. She has a, a clothing line called Tomboyish. She's receiving our Velocity Award. 
So really representing everyone within the community. We're sold out. We're sold out this weekend oh, wow. at the wow, Downtown Independent. We're sold out at the YouTube space. This weekend we'll Can be I at still the- still come? You, oh, honey, you got your press Forget passes. Ball, your spot <laughs> but the, the Downtown Independent, party. I just want to give some shout outs. We are screening 40 works from across the globe. We have people coming in from China, from Canada, from Europe. All over the globe, we have an Iranian trans project called I Don't Want to Be Here. We have Ricky Rebel's new music series called Rebels Everywhere. We have got Gaberhood, the Reverie original half-hour scripted show that was shot in Chicago. We've got shows from South America. We've got shows from China. We've got shows from all across the globe. And people are coming in like droves. And the best part about it, and Alex, I'm going to introduce you to everybody, we have folks speaking from E1. We have folks speaking from Brian Graydon Media, from Logo, from Viacom. We have folks speaking from Blue Fever, from Pongolo. We have folks speaking from so many major, massive studios because they know the value of digital short form and more than anything, LGBTQ content. Wow. I love that. Well, if there's a time. But don't invite me because I'm going to be so irreverent. You are going to be (laughs) podcasting live because we have a podcast. I'm going to be live streaming, but I'm going to be live streaming on on the rocks. On the rocks. It'll be a little Pink, I'll be like, how could you ever be a reverend? On the pink carpet, you're gonna you're, like you Gigi have, Gorgas. Yeah, what's up? Really? You're gonna be backstage, girl, drinking vodka, two chicks vodka with Gigi Gorgas and me and everyone no, else. No, but it's actually very important. In fact, we're gonna play yes, uh, the trailer for Out Out Webfest. Yeah. And when we come back, just for all of you, we have to talk about our most embarrassing moment in the entertainment industry. Oh. Ooh. Oh. I want to oh, hear no. yours. Oh, <laughs> oh mine's oh, no. so good. I have so many. I can't hear. tell that one. Tell me that you felt the same way too So consumed by the stars in your eyes I fell so hard for you Typecast as a grown ass man Will cry wolf like you just turned ten Still you have my heart in your hands I fell so hard for you Oh I know This is a hopeless game This is more than a physical connection Baby, it's a chemical reaction Can you feel what I feel? You gotta give me a to love Gotta give me a to love Tonight has been so special. Yes. We literally Woo! have represented every community. Woo! Woo! So we're going to go around the room. And what is the most embarrassing moment in entertainment? And then you give your handles. Mark. Oh, no. <laughs> this is not good. Mark, wow, you're very course. popular with like women. I can drink a little too much. Bears. Come to your, kind of My most embarrassing moment on, on stage? Wow. Um, I rarely tell this story, but I actually, it wasn't embarrassing, but it was my most outrageous. Uh, I had a theater company in Chicago, and I actually, during a scene, where I was backstage waiting to go on, I had sex before I went on to the scene. I had sex during Bye Bye Birdie understage when the dancing was happening. Good for you. Right before before my entrance. Well, Well, there were two entrances. (laughs) (laughs) Now there's a new baby. I'm a Ron Miller baby, too. But but I don't know if I was (laughs) embarrassed. Oh, okay. (laughs) Wow, okay. <laughs> Patricia. Oh my God, I have so many, but I think that this is the worst one. So I had to put on this really tight dress. I was hosting, that's when I first got You here. did that for Saturday night at Zan, uh, Stan Zimmerman's play. No, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. She walked into yeah. a 50 seat theater because we went yeah. to see a play. She wore the sexiest, she's like, <laughs> and you almost let me fall on the floor. <laughs> so anyway, so private joke. So anyway, yep. so the dress was so tight, so I took my underwear off, <sighs> but I put it in like my my bag of clothes that I have changed, <laughs> and it fell on the floor. <laughs> oh, no. It fell on the floor, and then the camera guy goes and says, "You drop your." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
no. called you out? No, well, I looked. No, it was like They're literally, literally. He didn't he, keep them? No, he didn't keep them. Did he sniff them? them? eBay. No. So, no, apparently they were just on the floor. They were red on the floor. Just a little thing. Of course they were red. Yeah. And yeah. There were a little thing Good girl. on the floor. <laughs> little things, exactly. You know, From Fredericks of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> So Not a come, sponsor. Not up. yet. <laughs> <laughs> My well, thoughts that, could get me arrested right now. Oh. Oh. That guy comes running to me. He goes, Patricia, I think you dropped these. Uh, and I'm like, wow. he, give me that. He, he, <laughs> I, I, I just, don't get me wrong here, but mm-hmm. I think he was gay. Because <laughs> no. if that's all he did. No, he <laughs> wasn't. He wasn't. He well, was, if he was gay, he wouldn't have touched no. him. Like, oh. No. No, he had he tongs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No. Can I be honest? My introduction to Patricia, oh she God. came into a show that was like maybe a 50 seat theater at most, right. and we were like all sweating and like, what are we doing here? All like, sweating. She <laughs> took out kale chips and chewed them. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right? I'm Damien, chewing something. you've been an actor. You've had some. Yes, I was. Actually, I was on the Gilmore Girls. I played Lance, the gay character on the Gilmore Girls, for one episode. I love that show. Wow. One episode. Stan. Stan Zimmerman. Stan Zimmerman was a, yes. yes. Stan, actually. Yeah. And Stan's got a show on Reverie through Tello, but it's really... What's happening? I don't know, but there's like some, there's like a little person coming it's up like, on the, the floors <laughs> right now. It's like Midsummer's Night Dream. There's like... Yeah, it's a little Puck, Puck just showed up. Puck, the narrator. Um, so my most embarrassing... That sounds true. Do not give me vodka to come on the show again. My most <laughs> embarrassing... Andrew, you're supposed to be watching Andrew. me He's right taking now. one picture. Andrew's response Wait a minute. Andrew's He's supposed on, to be here covering... Andrew's on his sick he, he took he one picture. He is our communications coordinator. He's not doing a very good job right now. So my most embarrassing moment in entertainment... It's not this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in so much trouble after this. My most embarrassing moment in entertainment was okay, so this is when I was acting, and I was rushing to an audition, and it was the audition was in drag. I had to dress in drag, right? And I was late because my friend took so long to do my makeup and my hair. I didn't know the hell I was doing. I didn't know how to dress in drag. And I'm like, you got to do me up because I, I've, I've got to get this part and whatever. And I ran three stoplights on Fountain, and a cop pulls me over. And he's all like, do you realize that you didn't stop? And I've got my <laughs> head shot as a boy in the passenger seat, oh, right? Oh, but he was following you, though. Uh-huh. But here's, here's three stops. Not, and I'm in full <laughs> drag, full drag. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm late for an audition at, like, Probably Sunset Gower Studios. <laughs> I'm all like, they from Golden Silver, Girls like, here. Yeah. Reverend Silver, like, and, he, and, and he, I'm all like, see, look, look, here's my headshot. And it's like me done up as a boy. And he looks at me, looks at the headshot, looks at me, looks at the headshot. And he's like, you got to go. It's fine. It's okay. You you, you get a pass. <laughs> got oh, off God. for dressing drag. We'll get you out of a ticket. Hmm. Wow. David, where that. can our listeners so follow you? Everyone needs to download Rever. You can get a 30 day free subscription. Woo! 30 days free. It's four ninety nine a month at Revry, R-E-V-R-Y dot TV. R-E-V-R-Y dot TV. It's on all mobile devices, iOS, Android, TVOS, which is the new Apple Television, Chromecast, Roku, coming to Android Fire, Fire Stick, and Pluto. That is right. I got a rehearse girl. And I will tell you, come to Out Web Fest this weekend if you're in the Los Angeles area. We have the YouTube space, unfortunately, is sold out, but we've got lots of tickets still available for the Downtown Independent on Saturday and Sunday. Go to OutWebFest.com, OutWebFest.com. And you can follow us at OutWebFest, at Reverie, on everything on social. That's not rehearsed at all. <laughs> Media trained. Media wow. trained. Last thing was. I mean, I... New to the show. Yeah. Come on. You're going to be on the show now. I, I really don't know if I can say my most embarrassing moment, but I'll put it like this. Uh, do it. There. Come on. I talk about my underwear on the floor. <laughs> it's like you can see me. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, as a adult film performer, you do live shows. And sometimes, yeah. Oh. Wait, is it an adult film performer? It's not adult entertainer anymore. What do you well, like? What's the po- what's I, the PC? No, 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 no. It's just- Whatever. As a porn star, gay especially, you will show up at some events sometimes, and you'll actually do my free live almonds. Shows. By the way, are making a. <laughs> they, they were a hit. I got and, a, um, just wait a minute for our <laughs> listeners. I got a gift bag delivered. I give a shit. It's our gift bag now. Don't send me a gift bag of nuts and. 
And I Jesus, what do you want to get back of what? I would appreciate I that. I wouldn't. I open it. <laughs> she <laughs> opened it, and everybody's uh, munching. It's the like, crunching so noise that you heard throughout this entire that. podcast. It's the funniest thing I've ever yeah. seen because I've never seen somebody go after her. Get back a bag of that. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe him. Girl. <laughs> anyway, well, I mean, to wrap it up, um, there's a live sex show that you can do, that. I'm actually going over to uh, Belgium. Um, it's my next one that I'm doing um, at the end of the year. And, well, I was um, in Las Vegas um, performing a live show and um, was not properly prepared. <sighs> for the straight man, this is dramatic. And I was a bottom. I was not properly prepared for Ooh, a live sex show. Like a Berlin brownie. <laughs> so, that's Ooh. embarrassing. <laughs> For I'm all of us. Such a lady. Like, <laughs> She's clutching her pearls right now. She's like, I'm a lady, bitch. And I'm, I'm a, a lady. Yeah. I'm a blouse. I'm a feminine top, honestly. <laughs> You're not a top if you sit on I'm it. I'm 100% top. It's called a blouse? Yes. He's, ta- he's tan is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't save him. Excuse me. How did I get on this show? <laughs> But you have the most fun. (laughs) (laughs) And now my listeners have daddy issues. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Sorry about that. Wow. I mean, how do I beat that? Uh, hopefully you don't. It, and not a chance. Like you can a, can find many ways. <laughs> like, hopefully we will later. Okay. <laughs> I need to know how to submit my content. Ooh. You submit something else, but <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, I've had Academy Award winners. Um, <laughs> Shirley Jones. <laughs> not my show. not anymore. <laughs> <Debbie Hedren>. <laughs> 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 oh, for oh real? so my phone, fo- uh, my most embarrassing. Uh, I used to be involved in Civic Light Opera, and it was lend me a tenor, and I was on the bed because I was supposed to play dead. <clears throat> I guess I was so heavy, <laughs> I broke the bed, Ooh. and so it was the other character's role to talk about how sad he was about my death. So we <laughs> sat on the bed. <laughs> No. <laughs> it collapsed and then I rolled. Oh, <laughs> and then I started. I was laughing so. <laughs> and he, his whole thing. I'm. <laughs> I couldn't talk because it was there. I couldn't help it. Uh, <laughs> that's what happened. That's a good one. There's not a sadder <laughs> death than that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's and I one. tried. I tried really hard because I got paid a lot for that. <laughs> I was like, Act dead. <laughs> I, I oh no! <laughs> but the other guy, this little actor in community theater, was so determined. So he slapped against me, and I'm like laughing. And he's re- anyway. All right, <laughs> Kurt, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a moment of silence there. That was a little awkward. Yeah. yeah. Find us on social. media. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I love you guys. This is what our this show fun. is all about. So fun. Kurt, thanks he, so much. He's still for trying to recreate the yeah. image of him rolling <laughs> up to the back. Like, oh I think you guys, <laughs> you guys should rolling sing it downstage. You guys should sing it like a duet yeah. together right now. Yeah. Love Kurt. Here's how we're gonna end the show. We're gonna end the show with Mark Arthur Miller's "I Don't Have Time" because he shows off his voice. I don't know the time. Fabulous. Mm-hmm. I don't have the time for wars about the gods or who we all should be. I'm willing to wait until this journey's in before I truly see. I don't think they'll mind if I spend all my time loving you. Can we have that private moment? I could toss my phone and look at you And you could look at me And in our eyes we'd realize There's no better place to be Baby, just you and me No better place to be Baby, just you and me No better place to be Hey girl, turn off that TV
This has been On the Rocks with Alexander every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On the Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On the Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday.